Welcome back to Outriders. In the previous video on the channel, we had a look at the five new legendaries, or at least their mods, that are coming to the World Slayer expansion. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Outriders World Slayer preview, the 2.0 expansion we've hoped for. Credit for this goes to IGN, their link will be in the description. And just quickly before we do get into this, if you're not currently subbed to the channel, make sure you do sub turn notifications on. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, all support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to support me further as a creator, then check out the links in the description and let's get into it. So what we're going to be doing is watching this, oh, I might skip through a little bit of it, but basically I want to see what the gameplay feels like. This is a preview of the expansion. So if we press play, you'll see on the right hand side Outrider 30 self raised and there's been a couple of deaths and stuff. You've got the Apocalypse tier, their Apocalypse tier number three, you've got that at the top. Then you've got a level 34 fisherman boss. And it just... I, I don't know. Am I expecting too much? Like, does this not look incredibly similar to everything else in Outriders? They've just added in new enemies. They've got new areas to explore. I mean, it, it does seem like the basics of an expansion. I, I don't know, maybe there's just still a bad taste in my mouth from the launch of the game and how bad it was. With the, I can't even remember the name of it, was it like New Horizon or, or something like that? They did a little update, they added a couple of new expeditions and stuff. That was quite good. They, they got the game into a good spot. Now they've come out with the expansion, and I think the biggest problem for me just like especially watching through this gameplay the biggest problem for me is the fact that this expansion after everything that's happened with this game is so expensive it's going to set you back like 30 pound or 35 pound and if you don't own outriders it's going to cost you like 55 pound it's a ridiculous price for an expansion especially after the history of this game but with pax points you unlock ancient pax powers in the world slayer dlc you grow stronger than ever you earn them as you complete various story points in the World Slayer campaign. You spend them on new class specific packs trees, which will basically allow you to have like a hybrid class going on. And then the class points cannot be spent on the packs tree and vice versa. Your packs tree is active even outside of World Slayer content. So, I mean, it just feels as though this stuff is extra grind. You just go into the game, you do the same stuff you've been doing in a different setting with different weapons against different enemies, and you just spend hours and hours leveling up and just becoming stronger. I, I don't know what it is, but I feel like I'm slowly becoming against this more than I am for it, and I, I can't put my finger on it as to why, because the expansion itself does look decent. It's just there's a couple of red flags already. They've shown off the legendary mods. There was five of them that they showed off. Then they've also, what else have they done? They did the reveal trailer where they briefly said there's a new endgame mode. There's going to be story stuff. I, I don't know. Let, let's continue watching this. So this is just explaining about the PAX points. Then we've got a little cutscene coming up. And then we're just we're back to the fisherman gameplay. I know it's a preview. Like there's not going to be a lot of different gameplay. But I mean you're just you're fighting a boss. And then you're taking down enemies and they're cutthroats and stuff. And then I mean this what sort of a showcase for a, even for a preview is this for your inventory? This armor piece, the background of it, it's got a different shade to the standard purple. Okay, so Predator's Mantle, Upper Armor. This is one of the new Apocalypse items because it's got three mod slots. You see it's got Final Breath, so for Feed the Flames reduces the skills cooldown by 50%. Achilles Heal increases your crit damage by 50% of your resistance piercing. Then Ice Trap. Whenever your health drops below 30%, Freeze is inflicted on enemies within a 10 meter radius, 5 second cooldown. So I mean it's nice to have a third mod slot on your gear, but... I mean, if you're, like, say for an example, you do the campaign, it takes you four hours. You go through to the end game mode, and it's a variation of the expeditions. You do them all once, and the entire expansion, for your first playthrough doing everything there is to offer, takes you eight hours altogether. What do you do after that? 
you've just paid £30 for an expansion, and based on what they've like shown us and what they've explained to us, it just seems as though a lot of the focus has gone in levelling up and adding an extra mod slot to items and just basic stuff. There, there's still no loadout system, there was no extra class in the game, there's no locking system for your gear, they haven't shown us anything. All you can do with this piece of gear is select it, show the details and unequip it. There's still no locking feature for gear and that's like one of the big things that a lot of players have asked for. So this is the PAX tree. Activating deception skills grants you 25% shield every one second for four seconds. So you've got your standard trickster, you've got points, you've got your leveling system, you've got your max XP. Then you've got packs, you get points for that. Then you've got your ascension, so you've got your ascension level, you've got the points from it and the XP from it. So this is going to be your packs tree. And it's basically just to add extra skills onto your character, and that is it. You just sit there and grind mindlessly and earn extra skills, or extra perks for your skills and stuff. So like here, special tactics. Damaging elites increases your damage against elites by 4% for 3 seconds. It can occur once per second and stacks up to 20 times. So you can get, what, 80% damage for 3 seconds if you stack it enough. I mean, it's going to make you stronger, but what's the point? This is the ascension, so you can increase your anomaly, your endurance, your brutality, and your prowess. So if you put an ascension point into resistance pierce, you increase your resistance piercing up to 2.4%. There is also a feature to reset the branch, but I mean it doesn't do anything, you're just levelling up to become stronger. Increase your skill leech up to 1.2%, and you can have a max of 50, so you're, you can go up to the ascension level 200. But I mean, even with a preview, we're not actually getting to see anything besides enemies and settings. We got a, a brief glimpse, but like, what do those skills do? Like, could they have not have shown like gameplay of before putting the ascension point on, then after? Could they have not shown having a couple of skills unlocked in the PAX tree and all that sort of stuff? I, I don't know. This expansion gameplay just it looks boring. It's the same stuff we've done. I think they should have added another class, they should have given us loadouts, they should have given us a lock feature, and they definitely, at least by now, we're a little over a month until this launches, they should be telling us what this endgame mode is. They should be building hype with it, but instead they've showed us legendary mods, they've given people a little bit of hands-on gameplay, and they've scripted together the most, like, outrageous, bizarre beta, closed beta, phase system that I've ever seen. They limited it to a small amount of players, just from North America. You have to have over 50 hours of gameplay. And then the phase two of the closed beta is going to be based, like, the length of it and how long it lasts will be based on how well the first one did. And that's closed beta. Phase one's already happened. Phase two should be happening soon. So what about an open beta? What about doing something to actually bring players in? It looks as though they're doing absolutely nothing to try and bring players back and bring in a new audience for the game. So even if this is an amazing expansion, what are they going to do? They're going to rely on content creators to bring in everything for them. I, I don't know. It, it's just my opinion. Maybe I am being a little bit too negative about it. I'm not entirely sure. But as I said, opinion. It might change, might not. I don't know. We're going to have to see. Hopefully there's some more stuff coming up that we can jump into and have a look. But what we're going to do is leave that video there. Again, credit to IGN. Their link will be in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah.